What's going on guys, it's your boy Woodsy, coach of the West Virginia Noctiles with a brand new draft for you guys. Uh, this is going to be season 7 of the IBL, which is a league that I joined about a, uh, a season and a half back ago and I took over for a team halfway through the season. Uh, last season was my first full go at it and I did end up taking the belt home, so that was nice. And um, yeah, with that we're going to try to go on a little uh, defend the title streak here. Uh, with that being said, it is a 12 mon format, which is uh, pretty deep, uh, probably deeper than anything I've ever played before, so it's interesting. And we have 150 points to work with, or 115 points rather to work with in a free draft. So uh, we do have to draft exactly 12. We can't draft any less, but we do not have to uh, use all 115 of our points. Uh, other than that, battle rolls are pretty uh, standard, you know, smoke on clauses, blah, blah, blah. And, you know, like any other tweaks that are pretty standard in the format. But uh, other than that, I'd say the only thing that's worth really pointing out is there's a lot of, uh, like, semi-broken mons that are running around, like Shell Smash Blastoise and Nasty Plot Zam. So um, I think those kind of things kind of weren't specifically drafting a check for in something like this, but I didn't really do that. I think I kind of, uh, by chance, got some checks to those. So uh, hopefully it kind of works out with all of that. But uh, with the first pick here, we pick good old-fashioned Mew, probably my uh, my favorite mod in the format. This is one of the two mods on my team that I've actually used before. But Mew, and like normally I try to always draft something new, but Mew is one of those mods that I will always come crawling back to because it's just so fun to use and it's like a completely different experience for every week anyway. It's not like, uh, you know, you're going to get tired of running a new Mew set or anything like that because you could really just do whatever the hell you want with it. Um, and just because of that, like, you know, like, it pretty much covers all of the bases, like, it, for great for hazard control, because it gets removal and every hazard in the game, gets setup options, uh, could be a great support mon with, like, Taunt, Will-O-Wisp, Toxic, blah, 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 and, yeah, I, I mean, it gets pretty much every option in the game. Of course, uh, going through the rest of my draft, I don't want to have to rely on Mew as, like, an actual, uh, like, Stealth Rocker, for instance. Like, I don't want to be running Stealth Rock Mew all that often, actually, so just, like, stuff like that is uh, something that I was careful with through the rest of my draft. Uh, also, a big reason I drafted this was because my boy Jer, who was the guy I played in finals last season and is also one of the admins of the server, was talking shit on Mew, so I gotta show him up with my boy Mew here. I'm definitely gonna... We play week two, I think, so I'm, like, specifically gonna just try to 6 0 him with some crazy Mew set, and that's, like, pretty much my biggest goal on the season. But after that, we got big boy Mega Kang. I have never even seen this thing used in Draft League because a lot of the time it is banned, but usually when it is, uh... Not banned, it's because uh, Seismic Toss is banned on it, because that's really the only broken thing on it. But uh, a lot of people talk shit on Mega Kang Scan because they think it's garbage without Seismic Toss. And uh, like I said, I have never even really seen it to know, which is why I decided that I'm going to take it upon myself to see firsthand. Couldn't have any everybody uh, talking shit on the baby like that, so I had to, uh, you know, put my foot down and step in for the little guy. And, uh, yeah, I don't know, hopefully, I feel like... Uh, I feel like the reason, probably, I mean, I don't actually know, but I feel like the reason people think it sucks is because people view it as a wall breaker. But, like, I don't really see Mega Kangaskhan as a wall breaker, because, I mean, it is just so damn fat and it gets wish. And, like, like I really see it as a wall more than I do as a wall breaker. I mean, it's even bulkier than Mew is, technically, and uh, it only has one weakness with the fighting, which Mew covers pretty well, which is uh, why I paired it together with it, because Mega Kangaskhan, of course, is also a ghost immunity, which um, Mew really appreciates and all of that, so uh, I do expect to be running a lot of uh, bulky Wish Kangaskhan this season, but uh, it is also a pretty good wall breaker with stuff like Power of Punch and uh, Fake Out is nice coverage, and then, you know, just like normal spam with the, uh, the Earthquakes and the Dark Moves and blah blah blah. Uh, after this, I wanted to pick up a Fairy type just because I thought to myself, you know, A, again, it's another fighting resist, so it goes really well with Kangaskhan, and it also resists those Dark and Bug type that uh, Mew is going to be uh, fearing. So I went ahead and picked up Tapu Fini, which uh, is pretty good for, I mean, it has a lot of good support options. It gets screens. It is a, uh, it's a defogger, but again, like, I don't know how often I'm going to be running defog on Finny because it does get rid of Misty Terrain this generation. So I don't know that I really want to be getting rid of my own terrain. Although I don't think it's that big of a deal because I don't think Misty Terrain is like, 
it's like it's not like that great if I get rid of my own terrain I'm screwing myself over or anything like that but I did think that the mystic terrain could be pretty good for the Kangaskhan and the Mew who don't really enjoy getting burned or toxic or any of that kind of stuff and uh I don't really have a cleric on my team this season I think Mew technically gets heal bell but I, I could be wrong but I think heal bell on Mew is like a an early gen exclusive so it has some compatibility issues and stuff but uh I don't really want to be running Heal Bell on Mew all that often anyway, so uh, I thought the Misty Terrain was a nice little support option there. Um, on top of that, Tapu Fini is just a great mon on its own. Uh, I think Water Fairy is just an insane typing, both defensively and offensively. Uh, even with that like pretty low 95 special attack, it could really put a lot of pressure on teams while just eating hits for, for days and has a lot of great key resistances and stuff as well. Uh, moving past that, I feel like this pick is uh, maybe a little bit random seeming, but uh, I took this mod knowing what my uh, my fifth pick was going to be ahead of time, and uh, I was also kind of trying to look for some like some value mods at this point because I went pretty heavy with the top three picks there. Uh, I took a random mo uh, again as this is like my first mod that I would consider to be like like I'm going to run defog on this mod a lot, and uh, I do kind of get. I kind of get a little chubby one for grass types of hazard removal just because they could come hard in on like ground types that are going to be getting up stealth rocks and you know they could also scare out like the rock types that are setting it up and so forth and the fact that it has levitate on top of that and is immune to the spikes and t-spikes is just like this thing just is my perfect defogger mon like <laughs> this is exactly what I want when I have one a defogger also again pretty good offensively because uh you know that electric spam uh is something that really appreciates leaf storms because uh of course it's going to be hitting those ground types that are immune to or yeah immune to vault switches and stuff so this thing could be pivoting around uh even the stuff that doesn't really care about grass electric coverage isn't going to love a willow wisp or anything like that so uh i think random mo could get a lot of value in a lot of games um and it is also again this is like my uh, my electric resist to pair with tapu finny and uh, Finny, of course, resists the fire and bug type moves that are going to be scaring Rotom Mo out. So, um, yeah, knowing that my next pick pretty much covered all of Finny's weaknesses with the exception of Electric, this seemed like a uh, another good little piece of the puzzle there. Uh, getting into my uh, next pick then, I'm getting my Budget Steel and a Scapaleer, who I think is like a very underrated mon by pretty much th the world, <laughs> just because I, I think Buck Steel is an incredible type. Uh, they even like borderline one of the better ones out there because it has so many key resistances and of course it only has the uh, the one weakness of fire which Tapu Fini covers pretty well and then uh, in return Scavalier is going to be covering those grass and uh, poison moves that Finny is a little scared of so I thought all these mods kind of went pretty well together. Um, I mean, they kind of look goofy on paper all together, because I feel like this isn't something that gets run all that much, but they do kind of cover all each other's uh, weaknesses and stuff pretty well. Uh, and uh, getting into why I thought Escavalier is a very great budget pit is, is because on top of that great typing, it really has pretty good stats. Like, uh, 135 attack is no joke. It is tough to switch into that, especially when it gets stuff like Swords Dance and, um, like, Iron Head Knockoff plus uh, Fighting Move is really pretty good coverage. In its own right, uh, and, you know, Mega Horns are just good stab uh, neutral attacks on a lot of certain mons as well. So this is something that I would expect maybe running a lot of uh, Assault Vest sets. Because, uh, you know, those Steel types like to be able to take all those special hits from Psychic types and blah blah blah. Or Fairies and all of that. So uh, something like that and Swords Dance sets and etc. Uh, is something that I expect to be running a lot with this. Moving into the next pick. I noticed at this point that I didn't really have a lot of great speed control, which is why I picked up that big 130 speed stat Aerodactyl. Uh, also, my first like real rocker on the team, like I said, I don't really want to count Mew as a rocker because uh, I don't really want to be wasting a move slot on Mew all that often for rocks. So Aerodactyl covers uh, two little holes in my team with all of that. Aerodactyl is actually the second mon on this team that I've used in the past, and uh, I didn't even really like it all that much, but I, it did because it did plug up to a couple of holes. And uh, it did get a little extra tech this generation, which I didn't have before in Dragon Dance, which I was a little excited to try out. Uh, it is, I thought it was worth picking up anyway, because uh, Edgequake is really just pretty good coverage in general. Uh, it's another defogger, but I don't really expect to be running defog on it all that often, just because I have so many good defog options. And um, yeah, I mean, it, it could be a pretty good wall breaker with Taunt and that DD slash Hone Claws set up and all of that. So. Uh, 
looking forward to trying out Aerodactyl again with all of the uh, the glow up and with heavy duty boots now added in and all that kind of stuff too. Uh, again with that speed control kind of closing in on that gap between the 100 and the 130 that I had I thought Gengar filled in that hole nicely. Uh, Ghost spam is probably one of my favorite spams to use because uh, not a lot of people even draft normal types and stuff. So, um, you know, as if it could break dark types, which it can with uh, Dazzling Gleam or even just like the Sludge Wave uh, neutral kind of stuff that it gets, it could really be like almost impossible to switch in a lot of the time. It even gets Focus Blast for those normal types that I was talking about and all of that. So with Nasty Plot now added in for this gen and then it being able to run like Choice Spec Scarf and stuff, I think it is... Uh, pretty good offensive threat. This is really the first mod on my team that I thought to myself, like, like other people are going to have to, like, run a defensive set to, to deal with this thing. So uh, I thought being able to scare people into prepping like that with something with a bigger attack stat and speed stat with uh, Gengar was uh, pretty important for my team at this point as well. Uh, also, like, provides a grounded poison type for toxic spikes and stuff, even though I do have the Misty Terrain. I don't really expect people to bring T-Spikes on me all that much, but it was something that I always like to have anyway, just in case. So, uh, I thought Gengar was a nice little add-on at the, uh, mid-draft here. Finally, we get our ground type pretty late in the draft here in Dawn Fan. Uh, Dawn Fan is... Again, uh, another rocker on my team, which I could really use because uh, I don't really think Aerodactyl is like an every week type of bring. So having uh, another rocker available in Dawn Fan, who I could actually see coming a lot of the time, is nice. Also gets rapid spin. Another like my team just has so much ridiculous uh, hazard removal that, you know, like I, I, that's something that I don't really think I'm going to have to worry about a lot over the season. Uh, again, pretty big attack stat. Uh, being able to spam Earthquake as one of the better uh, offensive coverage moves in the game, especially because it gets stuff like Gunk Shot to be able to deal with Grass types and, you know, like Stone Edge to deal with the Flying types and all of that. It gets uh, pretty good uh, support offense mo or of moves like Knock Off and Ice Shard and all that kind of crap too, so I think Dawn Fan is a mod that I'm really pretty excited to be able to use as well. And uh, now that I had 15 points left, four, four spots uh, left, I was really just trying to maybe like fill in all of the uh, the type that I was missing at this point. Uh, fighting is a type that I always like to direct, so I have uh, the ability to break through normal types like Snorlax and stuff. So uh, I did pick up Big Hariyama here, who is an absolute offensive presence with Guts, Sheer Force, and that 120 attacks that. It also has like absolutely insane coverage moves. Uh, like pretty much every offensive typing coverage that it really could need. Uh, I think the the biggest thing that holds Hariyama back is that 50 speed stat because even though it does have like an insane 144 HP stats, you'd think it'd be able to eat hits, but it's kind of surprisingly frail a lot of the time, unless you're running like a, an assault vest thick fat set or something like that. So um, I, I think that's maybe like one thing I got to keep in mind using Hariyama, but this is definitely one I can see myself actually bringing a lot of the time just because it's almost impossible to switch into. So uh, if it has a pretty good uh, defensive matchup or something like that, it doesn't easily get broken down. Uh, this is something I can see coming pretty easily. Uh, next up we got Houndoom. I think Dark and Fire are like very key types that you pretty much have to have on every, or every team, so I wanted to make sure I got something that had both of that. Um, being able to revenge kill a lot of like ghost types and stuff with uh, that 95 speed stat, which is pretty decent at least. Uh, I don't think a lot of ghosts are faster than that other than like uh, Dragapult and Gengar, which I have Gengar, so... Uh, I, I, just, I think you can Sucker Punch anyway with a pretty decent attack stat, even though it usually wants to run special. So, um... Yeah, with all that, just in case somebody is really weak to uh, Dark or Fire, which happens a lot, those are two pretty spammable types, especially Dark. Uh, I think this is something that I could potentially bring as well. It gives me a Fire Immunity and Flash Fire, which could help with that as Scavalier and Rotomo at some point. And uh, I thought Houndoom filled uh, a lot of the decent holes that I had in my team as well. Also, 95 was a pretty good speed tier to fit into my team at this point as well. So, kind of like all of that about Houndoom here late in the draft. And uh, this is where I get into the, the real funsy picks with three points and two spots left. Uh... First up, we picked up Big Boy Shellgun, which I'd love for one point, to be honest. Uh, of course, I didn't have a Dragon type at this point, which I don't really think a Dragon type is all that important when I have Tapu Fini on my team, since that Misty Terrain is going to be um, lowering the uh, base power of Dragon type attacks under a terrain that are grounded. So, 
I didn't really think it was that important for me to have a dragon type, but it was still nice to have. I like dragon types defensively a lot of the time, too. So I picked a defensive dragon type in Shelgon, who is actually really bulky with an Aviolite and gets a uh, Wish, which I think um, having another Wish Pass option on my team, because I think there's a lot of things on my team that really enjoy getting Wishes passed to them. So uh, not having to run Wish on Kangaskhan all the time, because uh, I don't think Kangaskhan wants to be, you know, like locked into being Wish every week. I think having the, uh, the other option really was nice to have. Uh, 95 attack stat is also, like, usable. I'm definitely not gonna say it's good, but, uh, you know, like, Dragon Claws and stuff are at least gonna be, like, not... They're gonna be doing, like, a little bit of damage and stuff at least, right? So, uh, I thought Shelgon was a pretty good value pick for one point here, and then after this, I really had, like, absolutely no idea what to pick. Uh, so this was really a kind of a throwaway pick. I ended up taking Card Bank, which pretty much everything that Card Bank does... Uh, Tapu Fini could do way better, so I don't really know why I took this thing. I might end up getting rid of it at some point for some kind of meme on or whatever, just because. But, uh, yeah, car in general, Car Bank is just, like, it's another Stealth Rocker, which I don't necessarily need. Uh, it gets screens, which, again, Tapu Fini just kind of does better. And, uh, I don't know, other than that, maybe if I really wanted to flex on somebody, I could bring, like, Iron Defense Calm Mind Car Bank with Draining Kiss or something like that. But even, again, like, Tapu Fini gets all of that, too, and could do it better, so I don't know. I don't really know why this thing is here, but uh, anyway, with that, that's the uh, the wrap-up of my draft. Uh, I ended up getting ranked, like, really low in all the power ranking stuff, which I'm A-OK -okay with. I want to be that <laughs> down there, so I don't have any uh, expectations on my shoulders here, even though I am coming off the uh, the belt and all, but yeah, I'm, I'm cool with being down low. Uh, I like my team a lot, actually. I think there's a lot of uh, fun mons on here, which is all I'm really looking for. I think I could get uh, pretty creative with a lot of them as well, which is the, the like, I love <laughs> Mew so much just for that reason, because I could really bring so many creative sets with, with that. And, uh, yeah, with that, I'm pretty happy with my draft. Um, we'll be getting, I already actually played my, uh, my week one game at this point, so I'll be uploading that here pretty soon. And, uh, here's to potentially a good season run here, and I will catch you guys later in week one.